With regards to the DV, we know that some folks are going to have some potential issues with installing it. I want to let you know that first off, you're not going to be able to get it in with a clamp on at all, no matter how much you try. So what you've got to do is you've got to get off. the bolt that holds the clamp together, open it up, and get the clamp actually off of the assembly. You can even do it like this, to where the clamp is still hanging on there a little bit. What you've got to do is first the o-ring goes in. The o-ring does not go onto this groove. The o-ring goes in, you put the flange on, and then you don't tighten it tighten the clamp right away because what happens is the flange actually has to get pushed down about a millimeter or a millimeter and a half to hold it in place otherwise it's going to want to keep popping out so what you do is you put the flange on push it down or you can push it down this way on the table put the clamps on and push it down hold the clamps together once you have the clamp together put in the bolt and yet yeah, it is going to want to pop out so you got to push down on it get it started and now it's secure in place and you can go ahead and start tightening down on the bolt if you just want to make sure that it's seated push down on it again and it doesn't need to go anywhere any further you can keep tightening this but the main idea of this whole process is to put the o-ring in first, put in the o-ring first, push down on the flange, and then put the clamp together. And the clamp pretty much needs to be able to come together. If you're doing this and the, the clamp's not coming together, so there's a big gap like this and you can't put it together, your problem you've got is the flange is out too much. So. You have to push the flange in so that the o-ring seats around the groove and then hold the clamp together. Once you do that, you can pretty much hold it with just two fingers and retain it. Then you can put the bolt through and put in the nut and you're ready to go. You can just keep tightening that on. You can continue to hold it down as you tighten if you want to. But that's how those flanges come in and whether it's this flange or it's the Subaru flange, it's all pretty much the same. Okay, now when you get your DV, you might have some challenges with you know, the how the brass fittings are going to screw in because each of these units are obviously individually CNC machined and so there might be a little bit more material, less material in the thread on some of these units, but they're all threaded properly. The way they work is on some of these, it's very easy to get the thread started. You can even go down four or five threads by hand. It's very easy. But you always need to go in with a wrench and tighten it up. Now on some of these, in the, the initial portion of the thread, it'll only go in one or two threads. Well, if it only goes in one or two threads by hand, you need to go in and follow up with a wrench to tighten it down and once you tighten it down it will self clean the threads on the hole Once installed in place, they go down pretty far. And for some of you that are wondering why there's a gap, that's actually kind of the purpose of threaded fittings, is to have the threads provide the seal so they're not meant to go all the way, all the way down until they're flush because there needs to be enough tightness in there that it's going to seal the pressure in the application even without any Teflon or sealant around the threads.